Hi gang, uh, today we're going to be doing some painting on Sumie paper and this was part of a process I used to create some uh, greeting cards that I've shown on my blog and on Instagram. The, some of these cards use the dripping paint technique and I, I will link to that. Today we're going to use Sumie paper, watercolors, and brushes to create some patterned paper. The Sumie paper is a thin uh, paper from Japan. It's also known as rice paper. It's actually a very strong paper, but it's very delicate when it's wet. So that's one of the challenges of working with it. It's also unsized for the most part, so super absorbent. So it's pronounced uh, sumi a um, so the other supplies I'll be using are my watercolor paints and two nice clean bowls of water I will be using probably the smallish brush now also I wanted to talk to you about the the inks I picked out since these are for cards I picked out inks and patterned papers so I, that was my first choice was the patterned papers. Then I went with the inks, and I have here Pale Tomato, Midtone, Green Hills. These are all Hero Arts, whatever you have, and Pool, and whatever kind of patterned papers you have. And so I'll do the same with all of my colors. I think this is Pool. This to me seems to be pretty clearly a um, manganese blue. It's close enough. I might want to put a little bit more, uh, either lighter or a tiny bit of indigo into that, or even the opposite color, which would be orange. Just gray that down a little bit. And then the tomato, which is That's right on the money there. Okay. I've got my usual two little pails of water here. One for dirty water and one to wet my brush. Squeezing the water out just at that base of the brush, the ferrule it's called, so that you don't get too much water so it doesn't spread to the paint, uh, won't spread too much you'll have a little more control. That's a mix of Viridian and Sap Green that I decided that, uh, I think it was called Forest Hills Green. I'll link the exact color of the ink below. And here I'm just painting some patterns. i just repeating myself uh, and just varying it a little bit along the way, keeping the pattern fairly close together so it's a little bit dense and uh, that that will just give it a darker look. Uh, you can do whatever floats your boat. It's a real nice idea to brainstorm on patterns, maybe look at patterns, maybe you have a pin board with patterns on it. Just practice drawing them and then it's just really fun to paint them once your hand is familiar with the motion. It's not always, it doesn't come easy all the time. You need to sometimes do a little pre-work to get this where you want. I have pretty good control over this Japanese brush. I've practiced a good bit with it. I'm holding it straight up and down so I can get up on that point. It, it's just a matter of practice, so do whatever you can and don't worry too much about it because this is supposed to be sort of meditative and fun. If you have a roll of Japanese paper, the easiest thing to do is to get a metal ruler and tear right against the ruler to tear off a piece. I'm going to link to sheets, a pad of paper as well. 
Here I've switched over to the tomato color, the red, and I am taking my brush from top down and bottom up. When Wherever I start, there's a little dot and it just is a different weight. So I hope you have fun with this. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and I will be putting up another video this week on decorative paper, matching up the decorative paper. See you soon.